This video is brought to you by Brand. You know, the sick supernatural comic by writer Antonio Bryce and image comics artist Kanan White I've been telling y'all about? Yeah, that one. Did you know that you can read the first 21 pages for free? Click that link in the description below for more details, and thank you Brand for sponsoring this video. Hey, Marv, how many establishing shots in New York City do we need? Let's say fun. Skip! <laughs> I refuse to believe there are so many assassins around the globe that they need these stock ticker machines to keep up with it all. God damn, you act like there's a contract killing every 15 minutes. First of all, that f***ing laugh. And second, who cares what you believe? That's clearly the universe that the movie is setting up. You mean to tell me there isn't a fraternity of assassins that uses gold coins as currency in the real world? Oh! <gasps> I am shocked. TikTok, Mr. Wick. TikTok. TikTok. So if this movie had been made in 2015, he would have said Vine, Mr. Wick, Vine. You padding the sink out, bro? I think you're padding the sink out. John Wick, excommunicado. In effect, 20 minutes. The annoying countdown to John Wick's official you can kill him now time is ridiculous for many reasons. But the update is given four times after the initial order is announced. How are the people here so busy that they can't be bothered to remember 6 p.m.? Set an alarm. Why make this lady update the situation this many times? Because he's John f***ing Wick. This guy is a goddamn legend in this world. The people that are trying to kill him are literally his fanboys. I mean, do you not remember the special ESPN held for LeBron James just so he could announce that he was going to Miami? The point is, some of us are just more important than our peers. Like Charizard, apparently. Jason Bourne spends money to keep important emergency sh in a safety deposit box. John Wick spends no money to keep the same important sh in a library book no one ever cares about or checks out. Jeremy has a borner for Jason Bourne. He's running down the same alley where they did the big flash mob thing in Premium Rush. Even if this nonsense were true, why on earth is that something wrong with John Wick 3? We pretending that Premium Rush isn't the best bicycle movie ever? And don't give me that E.T. bullshit. Just don't. Puncture wound. No sh Sherlock, didn't Wick come here for a quick and quiet stitch up and not obvious exposition? We all saw the knife, dude. We're at the point in this sins video where Jeremy completely misuses a word in order to complain about something that doesn't even matter. This is not exposition, which is defined as a literary device designed to introduce background information. This is a doctor analyzing a wound he intends on treating. Aren't you a fucking writer? Where? Right here. Just below my floating rib. Be sure not to hit my life. Be sure not to graze my car. I swear to God, this might be the funniest movie of 2019. But still, John Wick is a dick to the doc that tried to fix his sh quick. Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche. For the record, we are in New York City, and John Wick just gets recognized everywhere by other assassins. They could have set this at a Walmart, and it would still be ridiculous how often he bumps into people that want to kill him. And how did these people find John? I'm not quite sure you can just Aragorn your way through New York City like this and find somebody you didn't have your eyes on the whole time. For the actual record, this is a fictional New York City. And as was explained earlier, John is a legend. This is the movie trying to show you how thick the web of assassins truly is, while also demonstrating John's celebrity. It's actually wonderful world building if you're paying attention. This is one of the best scenes in the movie, but it only exists because the nine bad guys running in a pack earlier decided to come up here in stages. So is it one of the best scenes in the movie or not? Regardless how the action was set up, you liked what you saw, so this still counts as sending something you like. Hey, Jeremy, nobody wants to hear you laugh, dude. So everyone in this world knows what a badass John Wick is, to the point that some of these guys are fans of him. But let's not get it twisted here. They are being offered $14 million to kill this guy. So why don't they go for the kill here? They know what he's capable of, so toying with him is beyond stupid. Look, I know you like manipulating scenes to make it look like you have a point and all, but if you're going to do that, try not to do it with a movie practically everyone has seen. We all know they hit him with two cars in this scene and immediately got out of their cars and chased him down with guns. It's like motorcycle versus horse. Jeremy hates true lies. On Wick, open contract, increase 15 million. <laughs> Who was out there that was like, eh, 14 million, I'll do what I can, but what? Did you say 15 million? 
I'll pull out all the stops now. I'm pretty sure the movie is suggesting that the longer Wick stays alive, the more the bounty will continue to increase. Not whatever bullshit you just cooked up there, Cinema Sins. So the girls learn ballet and the guys learn wrestling? Seems kind of sexist. Seems like if this school theater is operating under the high table, everybody would learn fighting skills and ballet equally. Which they, in fact, do, as demonstrated by the male ballet dancer here, you virtue-signaling jackass. How can you fight the wind? How can you smash the mountains? How can you bury the ocean? I feel like the answer to all three questions is my d Sure, Jeremy. We all know that even small women is death by snoo-snoo for you. There is an adjudicator here to see you. Just say judge and you save four entire syllables. Why not just say kicked out instead of excommunicado? Why not just use money instead of gold coins? The movie is simply being stylish. Besides, an adjudicator is someone that can carry out the duties of a judge, but also resolves disputes in the absence of one. In the John Wick universe, an adjudicator is someone that acts as a representative of the high table. You have one week to get your affairs in order. But why? If what Winston did was so bad, why isn't he immediately ejected from the Continental? A week is some arbitrary bull because the adjudicator was sent here to make a decision, and they made the decision to oust Winston for the part he played in allowing Wick to escape after the interview with him. Because they needed to prepare someone else to run the Continental, they gave him a week to better facilitate that transition. You gave John Wick seven bullets. The high table is giving you seven days. Mainly it's because John Wick's journey in this movie is going to take seven days. The number of bullets you gave John Wick doesn't really factor into it, but it sounds great, doesn't it? No, the Bowery King is getting seven days because, again, that is the time frame in which the adjudicator has to conclude their investigation in New York, and it allows them ample time to find his replacement. But he's excommunicado. It seems the manager has granted him amnesty. John got here by boat, so she had several days to make sure her men didn't kill him when he arrived. And if she didn't want anyone to know she was helping him, this visit could have been conducted in secret. What the helium are you talking about? The second part of your sin makes no sense as the visit is clearly a secret as these men are literally trying to kill John. The first part of your sin is equally as vapid because who the hell said these were Sophia's men? This is your blood, your bond. I guess we should just accept that John's going to have markers to bail him out of every situation. If you were paying attention during the library scene, the movie implies that this is John's only marker, as not only did he have nothing else in the book, he also had to reach this out-of-the-way location just to retrieve it. I'm not asking you to kill anyone. I just need you to get me to him. John plays the pronoun game so that Sophia has to ask who the hell he is. Apparently, you don't know the rules of your own game, because John definitely said him and not he. Part of me longs for her, and I have to kill that part of myself every day. Because sometimes you have to kill what you love. Those two statements don't exactly line up. You're saying to keep your daughter safe, you have to push down the motherly instinct to go see her. But then you say you have to kill what you love, which means you should have just killed your daughter so the longing to see her would go away. Oh, come the hell on, Jeremy. You know exactly what she meant here. She's clearly referring to the part of herself that wants to see her daughter as her daughter represents that part of herself. I will say that her phrasing works perfectly to describe what I do, though. Does the adjudicator always have to present their medallion with two fingers slowly sliding it across the counter? Everything wrong with John Wick 3, ladies and gentlemen. Only using two fingers. If the adjudicator speaks for the high table, then why do they need to use Zero and his crew to infiltrate the manager's theater? Why not just show up with the medallion and walk straight in without doing a bunch of ninja It's called sending a message. And I do enjoy how you're skipping the male ballet dancer in this scene. Mr. Wick, you know where the word assassin comes from? Oh Jesus, not one of these villains. We're gonna hear a full minute of the meaning of assassin and a crash course on the meaning of markers before he finally says, You are broke, Colonel Ross. The eye table has marked you for death. Which is something he already knows, and it dawns on us that none of the history lesson was enlightening or helpful. Bullshit. This history lesson serves to explain that the markers and coins come from this location and that they represent order and rules, rules that John has broken, which begs the question, why should he help John? I seek a meeting with the one who sits above the table. You mean there is someone with even more power in this world? By John Wick 9, we're gonna find out that the real boss of this entire criminal underworld is Thanos. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the film cliche. Follow the blightest star. Walk until you are almost dead, then keep walking. Is this an action movie or a fairy tale? It's an action movie. That was easy. Also, I don't know how Barada can estimate John's physical fitness and relate it to his quest, but these directions turn out to be perfect anyway. Basically, what he is saying is that the Elder will find him. Jesus, man, these videos are getting worse and worse. Oh, it gets worse. No, you cannot keep my dog. Jesus, this series owes nearly all of its bloodshed to people's love of dogs. So what? It's a fictional f***ing story. This is so weird coming from the guy that made a superhero team out of disabled children. You want to talk about convenient? Looks like that guy brought a crotch to a dogfight.
God damn, I'd watch an entire movie of her and these two f***ing dogs kicking ass. But the movie still gets a sin for making me want a spin-off. You guys heard that, right? He's sinning the movie because it makes him want more. Halle Berry thinks that this will make the water seem less desirable to drink after she swishes it around in her mouth and spits it out. I can report that it does not. White people are fucked up. <sighs> yep. I see this scene brought a machine gun wall to a knife fight. The first one you did was funny. This one, I'm afraid, is not. You gave John Wick seven bullets. Your penance will be paid with seven cuts. Well, sometimes you gotta cut a mother <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that laugh. Also, the punishment was seven cuts. I counted six. False. You can count the cuts by simply listening. So this guy finds John and takes him to the Elder. Pretty much what Barada said might or might not happen. Question for me is, why does the Elder take this meeting? John killed a bunch of Barada's men after Sophia refused to give her dog to Barada and she started shooting up the place, which is something the Elder would have been informed about. So wouldn't that factor in? Or does the High Table just consider that an unavoidable circumstance? The Elder basically answers this question in the next scene. He's curious. How have you come to be so lost? Never seen a man fight so hard to end up back where he started. So tell me, Jonathan. Why do you wish to live? My wife. So you seek to live for the memory of love? At least a chance to earn it. I can give you one last chance to earn a life. Well, thank God, because otherwise this movie ends here and now. Too short and unsatisfying. Which is to say, of course you can. The second reason the Elder decides to take this meeting is that he wants to use John. He offers him an opportunity to come out of retirement and continue working for the high table for life. Neither the open contract nor the excommunicado will be lifted until you complete your task. John just walked across a goddamn desert to find this dude and he cut off his own ring finger and he's pledged fealty to the table once again until the day he dies. Why not give him a deadline to kill Winston rather than keeping the excommunicado active? Because now, and I'm sure this is why the movie does this, everybody who wants to kill John can continue trying to do so when he gets back to New York, despite all the sh he did to get another chance. It's a nearly impossible task and it seems to me the high table would want John back rather than making him go through an endless horde of assassins to complete his task. This is the only way the high table can ensure John will work to complete his task, by making it so that he has to do the job or risk being killed by resting on his laurels. This shit happens in the middle of Grand Central Station, and yes, while it's New York City, several people would notice these stabbings and would scream and run because of it. People in New York tend to notice and care about stuff like this. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. I saw a guy get stabbed three times near Franklin. I says you should have never put Hawaiian fruits on your pie. Look, I don't normally say anything about this kind of continuity, but this tall woman in the background is walking toward John here, and when the movie cuts, she's on the other side of the hallway walking behind John here. Okay, I'm taking issue with the fact that you said you don't usually take issue with this kind of continuity. This was the goddamn premise of your channel. You know, point out continuity errors and the like. You've gotten so far away from your original purpose that you don't even remember why you started. Technicalities. Missed opportunity to properly use the word you misuse all the time. Irony. John Wick and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Jeremy makes a pop culture re Winston refuses to step down and John refuses to shoot Winston. And now the adjudicator turns their back on them. And I'm wondering, why not just shoot the adjudicator? Sure, the consequences will come anyway, but you prevent this phone call in which the Continental becomes deconsecrated. Hell, you could even make up a story about how the adjudicator died. I don't think so. The High Table was able to figure out that the Bowery King gave John seven bullets for Christ's sake. There's no way Winston could just pop their agent without them figuring it out. What do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. Definitely sending this obvious Matrix callback for being obvious and unnecessary. Sending one of the coolest lines of this film. And I'm certain you made a Matrix reference in the John Wick 2 video, so here's another sin for being the pot that called the kettle black. No one will be seated during the Kingsman portion of the movie. Jeremy makes a pop culture. Need more firepower. You're the one that went out there with handguns, mate. Which were recommended to him by the concierge after explaining the armor upgrades. Much has changed during your time away. Like what? Well, let us say we have made armor improvements. May I suggest the 2011 Combat Master in combination with the 9mm Major? Besides, Wick definitely left the room with a Sig Sauer MPX carbine. <laughs> hey, future Birdman. Yo, what's up, dude? Was it, was it the laugh that got you? Because I'm really fucking close to going Captain Magma over this forced fake-ass laugh. Yeah, I can see how that would make you want to pull your ball hairs out. But no, that wasn't my catalyst. Wait until this, Jeremy. Then you will fully become like me. Holy shit. 
John should at the very least have a concussion after this. And this. And this. But who cares? I'm having fun. I'm still sinning it. And this. But, but that's it. I mean, what's one more, right? I would suggest that it's possible that he does have a concussion and that there is no way for the audience to know that. But I'm content with Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Why the f*** is this glass bulletproof? How does John get kicked through this glass when bullets couldn't even go through it? You see, CinemaSins fanboys, your guy is flat out lying to you. The glass that John shot was structural, but the glass he was kicked through was a single pane, part of the display. Villain sarcastically claps for the hero cliche. Except this wasn't sarcastic, as Zero is a big fan of John, and if you'd fully shown the scene, you'd see that he was actually cheering him on. These guys respect him so much, they pull him to his feet, only to double-team him with an immediate knife fight. And here we've come to the part of the Sins video where Jeremy is just watching the movie and pointing out things he sees. By the time this sword fight with a Microsoft screensaver background gets going, most of us viewers are just ready to get things over with. This amazing movie overstays its welcome by about 20 minutes. I can assure you, only you and some of your weirdo followers were thinking that. I would like to suggest a parlay. I'm wondering, does the adjudicator know the status of all the assassins who have come to kill John? I just want to point out that earlier CinemaSins complained about the adjudicator's title and stated that calling them judge would be quicker, yet has proceeded to use adjudicator this entire video. You were merely showing strength so we would let you keep the Continental. Why is this revelation so important to the adjudicator during this negotiation? I don't understand why Winston's show of strength just to keep his hotel means all the stuff he did gets swept under the rug. It's not like this movie has shown Winston to have any other motivation. So what the f*** does this even mean? You cannot be serious right now. What a blatant misunderstanding of the scene. This is the adjudicator admitting defeat in a roundabout way, stating that Winston can keep the Continental if he gets rid of the only thing standing in the high table's way. John Wick. You are terrible at watching movies. 